Hi, welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones. This is episode number seven. Now for some updates from previous blogs. Back in blog number four, I criticized the Hewlett Packard 20B financial calculator for its uh, poor uh, low power battery design. Uh, as it turns out, uh, the designer of the 20B calculator, Cyril Debreeson from HP, he's seen the blog and he commented um, that he will fix it in the next versions of the calculators and he won't do the same thing again. He'll be more conscious of it next time. So thumbs up to Cyril and HP for taking constructive criticism. Well done. Back in the first blog, I mentioned that the CSIRO, the Australian Commonwealth Science Organization, uh, won a lawsuit against um, Hewlett Packard uh, for infringing their patents on Wi-Fi. Um, as it turns out, uh, 13 odd other companies have um, also uh, settled with um, the CSIRO. They didn't want to go to court. They knew they'd lose. So they settled in huge names. We've got um, Dell, Microsoft, Intel, uh, Nintendo, Fujitsu, D-Link, uh, Netgear, 3Com, Belcom, all the major players. They've all settled um, out of court uh, for an undisclosed sum, but um, it's likely to be in the order of a billion dollars. So, good on the CSIRO. I've been asked a lot over the years uh, by young people, uh, how do I get into engineering? And um, a common question is, you know, how can I uh, do well at an engineering job interview? What should I say? What should I do? How should I turn up? And um, it's it's an excellent question. And certainly with the job market the way it is at the moment, with the financial crisis, um, it's it hasn't been the best it's been. So really, I'm going to hope and share some hopefully helpful tips. Okay, step number one: What do you wear to an engineering interview? Now, of course, a uh, tie is a, often called a noose for an engineer, so ties are pretty much optional. Um, but as always, you've got to dress smartly, but don't dress like a smart ass. You've really got to, uh, it's important to um, show that you know what you can do. So dress really doesn't have much to do with it, but um, yeah, you've got to look smart. Now, if you do like ties, that's fine. But can I recommend something like this, an electronic tie? It may look pretty corny, but that may just be enough to uh, win them over. Because the idea is to stand out from everyone else. Look better than everyone else. Be different. Be memorable. Heck, if you really want to make an impression, turn up in a lab coat. The second thing, and probably the most important, is to bring stuff to the interview. Bring stuff you've designed and done and that you're proud of. Don't just turn up empty handed. If you turn up empty handed, you're just going to sit there and you're going to fidget and if you've got nothing to talk about, it, you know, you, you can really be stuck and it can make you look like a real dunce. But if you've got stuff that you know about intimately and you can talk about, you're going to appear like a genius and it'll really help you stand out from everyone else. So don't turn up empty handed. Bring a whole suitcase full of stuff if you have to. Nothing wrong with that. Before you turn up, do some research on the person who you're actually going to be interviewed by. It's uh, not hard these days with the internet, of course. It's um, pretty easy to find info on people. Most people will have something out there on them and find out about the company too and their products, obviously. And when you do uh, research on the company's products, look at um, things that they aren't quite doing too well or uh, aspects of the market that they're not actually addressing and uh, raise those sort of things in the interview. Um, not, not, you know, just raise them gently. Don't tell them that they're doing everything wrong, but, you know, show that you actually care about the products and care about the company. Now, a good lot of the time, you'll be going through a recruitment agent and, uh, you know, everyone knows they're just absolutely useless. They don't provide... Uh, any service at all, but you know, sometimes you have no choice but to go through them. So uh, use them as best you can because um, occasionally they can provide some little snippets of info on the company and what they're working on so that uh, you can actually study up on that sort of stuff 
before you go there. So if they say, um, if they mention that uh, the company's working on, say, switch mode power supplies or they need someone with switch mode experience, bingo, you've got it. Study up on that. And then when it comes time for the interview, slip it in there and, um, you know, show your experience with switch modes. You'll stand out from everyone else who's unprepared. Don't bullshit on your resume unless you can get away with it. Now, it's, you know, it's not too bad to bullshit about how much experience you've got in some subject. You know, you may have only worked on something for six months, but you can say, oh, yeah, I've been doing it for a decade. Um, but that's all right. But you've got to be prepared for them to call you bluff, and you've got to be able to back it up. Now, it's fairly common in interviews. Uh, when you're sitting in the interview room, they'll have a bunch of the company's products there up on the table so that uh, you can see them and, you know, see what the company's all about. Now... I think one of the best things you can do is take that product and take it apart. Right in front of them. Get out your Swiss Army knife, you should be carrying one everywhere you go. Take it out and rip apart the product right in front of them and tell them what's good about their product. And you'll really stand out. It's an excellent thing to do. Take along a spare resume. Because if you've been through a recruitment company, they'll often modify it and totally change it and send it on to the company. Uh, so that hides all your details, but of also hide a lot of your good stuff. So make sure you have a copy of your real resume with you. You should always customise your resume for each company you actually apply for, um, because most will have uh, varying job requirements, and a generic resume doesn't doesn't really stand out as well as one that's been customised. So if you're going for a um, production engineering job, for instance, um, you know, uh, less on the R&D side, more on the production side. Highlight what they want. It's uh, almost universal. At the end of every interview, they're going to ask you, do you have any questions? And you should always, yes, you should always have a bag full of questions. Take along a whole bunch. Remember them, and you shouldn't just leave them to the end of the interview either. Keep asking questions all the way through. The goal in an interview to be successful is to ask more questions than they do. Interview them instead of having them interview you. Make sure you always have a sense of humour. Don't get down about anything and don't diss your previous company. Don't bag them out for anything. One of the things you'll quickly learn in the engineering business is that your academic results and your qualifications don't really mean squat. They don't mean anything. So uh, what you do outside of work, what, what you do in your own interest, in your own time, is uh, often more important than what you've actually uh, done at university or in other courses. It's just, you know, if you can show that you've uh, been working on some open source project or something like that, that is way cooler than just, you know, you've got an A plus in some stupid exam that you memorized. Engineering companies are generally looking for really smart people with a lot of talent and a lot of initiative. And you really need those to stand out above everyone else. So you can't just, you know, have no interest in electronics outside of work. That's, you know, that's nothing to stand out with. So tell them about all the stuff you do outside of work. And if you're not doing anything outside of work, find something to do. It impresses the heck out of people. Be prepared to be tested. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's fairly common in the industry for them to give you um, either a bunch of pre-written questions or, uh, you know, or, or some oral questions or even they'll give you a board like this and say, you know, tell me about it. This is one of my favourite uh, interview techniques when I'm actually interviewing people and it weeds out the idiots who don't know anything. Just give them a board and uh, say, you know, tell me what you can about it. It's actually important uh, right at the top of your resume to have a summary section so that they don't have to read the rest of it. All, all your good meaty stuff is right up the top in the summary. Say, I've got, you know, five years experience. I'm good at this. I'm an expert in this, this, this and this. And have all that stuff listed right up the top so they don't have to read through it. You go, go to the top of the pile straight off the bat. So I hope those tips uh, help you secure your next engineering job. Let me know if it goes well for you.